and we want to integrate the assembler into the compiler to, so we can have that path I showed in the, the beginning. So um, we hope you can be at least 20% uh, speed up at minus O0 and minus G. And we can hope you can share with binary iTRS code base as much as possible. So if someone wants to add a new format or a custom format, he doesn't have to um, hack too much in the code base. So this is what we have in, in progress right now. We have, um, for those who are actually working on an assembly for uh, and a specific um, assembly language or something like that, you can use the minus a slacks to, to debug the production of the, the ASM parser. So you can have your, for a simple uh, data section with a uh, hello string, you can have an identifier, you can see the string there. It's really useful for debugging. Um, we can parse, we can actually parse and assemble .s files and from this parsed.s file, the from, from the representation have, you can actually emit again the assembly file or object code. And we can actually emit the assembly file again in a different syntax. So for example, for x86, we can um, parse um, Intel ASM file and dump um, an ATT assembly file. So this is a, just a, an example of this working. We, um, we can assemble from, from the input for an .s file and like show the encoding for the instructions. Um, we also have in progress um, a completed assembler, which includes um, the relaxation phrase, allowing like later optimizations. That is true, for example, in x86. Um, after the relaxation part, we, we can know if we can, uh, instead of using a long uh, jump, we can use a short jump, for example, um, doing small optimizations for code size. Um, we have more and more stuff we are actually working on, like an interactive disassembler. This should make it really easier to write regression tests for new instructions. For example, you just call LVMMC minus disassembler. It waits for input, and you just uh, write the bytes of the instruction. It will output you the, the actual uh, mnemonics for it. This is really cool because we, we won't need like, to, to have stuff in L for match O. We just can write this, the instruction itself, have the dump for it, and write automatic tests to see if that we are encoding stuff right. So the, um, I'm talking about the architecture of this LLVMC, um, how it's done now. So we have an assembly parser uh, who emits code through an assemb uh, MC streamer. And this streamer can be specialized to emit uh, assembly or object code as I show you. So here is how, is how does it work now. We have a um, .s file as an input. We call the ASM parser for it. Suppose you want to emit an, an .o directly. It will call the MC matcho streamer, which will call em, emit instruction. We will encode instruction. You do that a lot of times until for the, the whole function. Then we call the matcho object writer to finally write into the file through the write object. Um, if instead of this we want to output the .s again, we use the MC ASM streamer, which will um, just dump in into the right dialect we want. As I showed you before, you can like input at and and like output Intel syntax. Um, but um, since since it's really new, this LLVMC, we are the current limitations for it is that it's quite experimental and demands a lot of um, code refactoring and cleanup because we want to share as much as code as possible between the assembly printers, the, the JIT, the object code emitters, and right now it's hard-coded for Metro. So the alpha mission which was implemented in that, um, um, on that scheme I, show, uh, I showed earlier, uh, it's not integrated into the LLVMMC architecture, and also the assembly part in, uh, the specific bits of uh, ELF assembly are not implemented too, so it should be straightforward to implement those, but they are not there yet. Um, and they assem the assembly printer is not entirely converted to use the MC ASM streamer right now. We just have that for x86, but um, it's not in the shape we want so far. 
Okay, so the MC Streamer future, um, we want to support other binary formats and we want that to be uh, really easy to do for a new format. We want um, to the MC Streamer to have a lot of new specializations like for JIT, for uh, Dwarf, Exception Handling, for Debug Info. We don't want, because um, if we're working on that, like the, the actual way that ELF is emitted, we are like duplicating a lot of code. So it's better we have specializations for this guy and share the, uh, as much as code base as possible. Um, eventually, in a moment, the JIT and the ASM printers will be, you share the same code base, which is not done yet. And you could also, um, if you achieve like the 20% we want, we won't care more, um, we won't have any reason to care about compile time with minus s, for example. You can use minus s for, to generate by default uh, some kind of verbose assembly, which will help a lot in debugging assembly code, generated for new backends and stuff like that. And encode can put a lot of stuff in this verbose assembly, for example, information about loop def, about encoding. Um, this really helps while debugging backends. So um, the future design we want, uh, it's like, for example, for print.s, we want the code gen to call the emitter, the code emitter. The code emitter just called the MC streamer. And since we have an implementation for outputting again .s, like MC ASM streamer, it will be done. For JIT, the same thing. They, shared, they will eventually share the same code emitter. So uh, actually, until the calling MC streamer will be the same code, and you'll just, um, since MCG streamer will be implemented, you'll dump the bits to the memory. Um, for object file emission, like for .dot writing, uh, we can have all, uh, every um, again the same scheme. We go through the uh, the MCS streamer. We have a new implementation like MC object streamer. We call the assembler backend, which is part now of the LVMC, MC, and it output for us a .dot in the, the case we had um, our previous limitation, now it's resolved because we can call again the MC object streamer, but it will call the, assemb the assembly parser for the, the inline assembly stuff, and that will call the MC streamer again and use the same interface to call the assembler backend and finally emit the .o. So, um, and this assembler backend will be something like this. Um, we'll provide relaxation, and then we just uh, call a generic MC writer, will dispatch things through the MCO Matcho writer, for example, or, or the ELF writer, and to a final dot O. And that is all. <laughs>